Hey guys, it's Kelly and I am back with another video for my Casing Genius series. Today we are going to be using some W plus 9 products. This is Hand Lettered Hello. This is the uh, Drummer Boy set, which is actually Christmas. And then the Amaryllis. We're not using it for Christmas. Um, we're using it to make a little beach scene. But uh, nonetheless, this week's Casing Genius is uh, Nikki Forker, who also goes by Scrap and Navy Wife. Um, and she is ridiculously talented and totally hysterical, and I absolutely adore her. So if you don't know who she is, I will put, if you're watching on YouTube, I will put a link to her blog in the, um, in the below, whatever that's called, in the below. <laughs> and, um, then obviously if you're watching my blog, it's totally linked. If you'd like to see her cards, please go to my blog. They're up there. So anyway, um, in her first card, she had a border around her stamped image and in her third card she had all these beautiful flowers so I got to thinking um, like how could I combine these two this this field of flowers watercolored field of flowers and this simple border and then this um, very clean and simple but totally bright and fun um, hula girl and I was thinking about like those old tiny postcards where like they had a border around them but then there was like a scene in the middle so that was what my game plan was so I started stamping these amaryllis stamps and you can see me I'm stamping and masking as I go along um, just to build up that border and this card um, card it's a panel what am I talking about uh, this panel is cut to six by like four and three quarters so it is bigger than my card front but it was so I could put all my stamping on there and still have a good um, have all like my edges covered and everything for my A2 size card. I wanted to do some watercoloring because in Nikki's last card she did beautiful watercoloring, so I am masking off just the edge of the flowers with this Molotov uh, masking pen. And it went on really easy this time. The first time I used it, it I didn't have such good luck. But this time it went on really easy, and um, so I was pretty happy with it. I was going to use the large um, palm tree from the Drummer Boy set when I first started, and it was just too big. So I knew I wanted two trees. I didn't want just like this random lone palm tree on the beach. So I stamped it down the way that um, the stamp was drawn, and then I masked that off, and then I cleaned it. And this is the beauty of clear stamps, folks. You can move them. They're malleable. So here I just twisted, twisted it. I I guess, yeah, I twisted it so that it was um, like kind of on an arch and then I could stamp it uh, so that it was leaning away from the other one, which I thought was way cuter than just like two straight up palm trees. So I'm going to do my watercoloring with Zig Clean Color uh, markers and I'm just going to put the um, marker right on down to the paper, not being really careful um, about where the colors, you know, necessarily going uh, because once you hit it with the watercolor, they're going to blend beautifully. So I just wanted to um, point out real quick, you can see on those palm trees that the bases look weird. Don't worry, we're going to fix that later. So I'm just using a um, flat brush, I think this is from Ranger, to uh, put some water down. And it wasn't as yellow as I wanted, but then as I dried it, I don't know what happened. It turned red on me. I mean, this beach is made out of Georgia clay. I don't, <laughs> I really, like, that is, this is a perfect example of make sure you um, test your colors beforehand because you never know what these zigs are going to do once they touch water. I thought that brown was brown, that brown was red. So anyway, I'm going in and adding back um, a little more of the yellow browns to get a more beach feel. And um, it still ends up being a little red at the end of the day. But it's not so bad that I can't live with it. Plus, like, I'm not going back and masking and stamping all these flowers again, for real, y'all. Um, so I was just drawing in between each layer. And here, uh, before anybody says anything, no, I did not buy that paintbrush curved. I leave it in my cup overnight because I'm lazy and it gets like that. But anyway, so I did some light little sprinkles just to get some texture on the bottom. And I still wasn't happy with, uh, like, the kind of depth I was getting over on the tree. So I added just a little bit more of the yellow and um, went ahead and just added the wet or the water to like so it was wet on the right hand side and that gave me more texture as well. Then I dried it with my heat tool but you have to dry it before you move on to your your next step because otherwise they'll blend together. So this is now I'm doing the ocean and it's darkest at the horizon line. It'll be lighter as it comes up to um, the water. It comes up to the water. It comes up to the beach. What am I even saying? 
But anyway, these zigs carry a lot of pigment, so make sure you start at the lightest point and then go out to the dark. If you start to the dark and bring it down into your light color, all you're going to have is dark. So, um, yeah, the water I actually only had to do once. I was really happy with it after the first go. And then um, I'm going to take my uh, number two round brush and I'm just going to do some light little lines in the water. And this is because zigs pick up really nicely. When you get them wet and blot them off, they pull up a lot of pigment. So it's almost like giving the um, illusion of movement. It's hard to see in the video. It's better. Um, you can see it better in the photo. But it's just like little white lines that maybe would be like the sea foam. And then for the sky, again, it would be darker at the horizon and then lighter as it moved up. So I only put um, pigment on the bottom part and then I cleaned my brush in between. And um, so yeah, that was like really easy. I wanted it to be a little bit more interesting. So I'm using some white acrylic paint and a uh, stiff brush. This just came in like a random set, shamefully to say. I think it's from China. Um, sorry, I live in the U.S. so I try to buy U.S. <laughs> um, but I'm going to water down some white acrylic paint and just go ahead and pounce that on to create some clouds. Side note, I had not previously tried that um, over the Molotov masking fluid, and it did make it a little more difficult to pick up. Not impossible, just a little more difficult. So I started with my finger, and I was having some difficulty getting it all up. So what I ended up doing is just pulling out a um, art gum eraser that I had, and I ended up actually using that to pick up the masking fluid. It didn't rip my paper or anything. I just had to work a little harder on those areas um, where I had put the acrylic paint over it. So once I got all of that up, then we're going to go ahead and get started on the Copic coloring. And the wonderful thing about watercolors is um, because, you know, they're transparent, you can layer over them. So even though I took my water right over my uh, palm trees, I'm not concerned about it because I know the colors that I'm using are dark enough to cover that up. If you were doing something that was really pale, then please take the time to mask because it, you won't be able to cover it up. Um, but I wasn't, and I'm lazy. I'm lazy, guys. I didn't want to have to wait for the masking fluid to dry. I just went with it. Whatever whatever makes you happy. If you, if you like pristine masking, um, then do that. Or if you're lazy like me, then don't worry about it and do this. <laughs> so uh, I added my shading to the palm fronds, and then um, I did the second one. I didn't feel the need to do it on camera because I figured you just watched me color that other one, and I did the exact same thing. So once um, that was done, I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, actual tree trunks. And with the tree trunks, um, I wanted like I wanted to blend out that bottom so it didn't look like two trees that were, I don't know, stamped one on top of the other. I wanted it to look like two trees that were like planted very closely together or maybe were the same tree. So what I'm doing is I'm adding um, my shading and uh, Dawn, the owner of W plus 9, when she drew these, you know, she drew in the, the bark and, and how that would be. So I'm adding shading in those places as well. Um, so that it, you know, it makes sense. You want it to look like a tree, but this is a little darker than I would normally go, but it's, I decided to go darker because these flowers on the outside are going to be so bright. So here I'm, you know, doing the shading, working from lightest to darkest, darkest to lightest. That's how I prefer to, to do my shading. And the lightest color is E55 and it is fairly light, but I only use just the littlest bit. And then I'm going to, um, put my Copics right over the background that I already started building. I am most comfortable doing shading with Copics because that's the medium I'm most familiar with. You can do this with watercolors if you're more familiar with watercolors or hey, if you just want to give it a try, maybe you're more adventurous than I am. Go do that. But I'm not. So I, um, I layer my Copics over my watercolor to build my scene. So here I'm just doing a little bit of um, some dots in the sand, trying to get that texture, make that background a little bit more interesting. Um, you know, this is what we're framing in. This is what we're trying to bring attention to. So I don't want to neglect it. And then from here, we're going to go ahead and move on to the flowers. Nikki's flowers in her third card were all pink. Uh, and her butterfly was orange, and that's beautiful. I love pink and orange together, but I wanted this to be a multicolored, it almost looks like a lei, 
do you know what I mean? Um, that, you know, just the way that the frame is, it could almost be like a necklace that's laying on top of a photograph. Uh, but so I showed you each color is what I've done. So I start with my lightest. I'm using a flicking motion. It's going to be darkest at the base of the flower and anywhere a petal falls underneath. So like here where it's underneath that other flower, I'm going to shade it accordingly. That means that some of my petals will be darker than others. That means that some of my petals will not have a highlight. It's okay. That's what happens in nature. So I'm going to go ahead and, um, you know, put down my darkest color and then work my way back out. This time I'll be adding more shading than I did the first time around. Uh, that's just my safeguard from getting too dark. You can already see how dark this thing is getting, right? Um, and then for my lightest color, which is the RVO2, the RVO2 works really funny over the RVO4. It pulls up a lot of pigment. So instead of going over the whole piece, I'm actually just going to take it in from the tips. So I can get covered what I need covered and not any more than that. So that is the pink. And then I went ahead and colored all of those. And now I'm going to move on to the orange. And yes, it's orange, even though I'm starting with the Ys. Even though I'm starting with the yellows, it's still orange. Um, and you'll just see how they kind of work together. This is a flower that is completely behind two other flowers. So there's going to be shading um, not only from the base of the flower where it's, you know, blooming out from. There's also going to be shading underneath, like on the top and the bottom, where it lays underneath those flowers. And, you know, this is just something that's going to give you um, good depth. You don't want your flowers to look flat. And especially since um, this is going to frame my whole card front, I really don't want them to be flat. Um, so, sorry, that little, I don't know what happened. You didn't actually miss anything. It was like my camera decided it had taped too much and, um, it was just going to go. But, um, so anyway, I'm just going to keep adding that shading. I had, you know, when I had the idea, I didn't see it as being quite so busy as it is. Busy is not generally my style. Um, I feel like this thing is busier than a one-armed wallpaper hanger, but, um, I'm okay with it. I'm, I'm okay with it because I think that, you know, I use the ideas that I had that I had been inspired from from Nikki's card and it's really easy to get stuck in a rut when you're a card maker and I love doing things like this because not only do I get to introduce you to somebody who is a fantastic person and a super talented card maker, but then I also get to be inspired by them. So this isn't probably something that I would have come up with any other way. <laughs> um, let's be honest. I, you know, I'm normally like, let's color a panel and then I'll put two strips of paper on the left hand side and we'll call it a day. Um, so yeah, then I did the purple and violets are really hard for me. I don't know why I have a hard time, um, to trying to figure out the blend. So what I normally use is a V01, the V04, the V15, and the V09. And the 15 isn't really any darker than the V04. It's just less saturated. It's more grayed out. So it blends a little better into that V09. Um, I don't know. I think that Copic has a million and one E's and a million and one yellows, which all look exactly the same. I didn't say that. Yes, I did. Um, but they seem to be lacking in their violet department. I wish that somebody would get on that. Um, but anyway, so now here we're going to do the last one yellow. And you'll notice that, uh, we've used these colors before. We, uh, the V02, or the Y02 and the Y38 I used in the orange flower. Um, but it's still going to be different because of the combination that we're using. So I'm starting with a super light yellow, which is, um, Y11. And then the Y02 is my next darkest color. Um, and then the Y38 is actually my darkest color, where in the orange flower, the Y38 was my second to lightest color and my Y02 was my lightest. So even though we are, I guess, reusing the same um, colors, it's a totally different palette. So don't feel like you need to buy every Copic marker. You can get a lot out of what you already have. Um, you know, I know that I don't need all of them, and in fact, when I first got the uh, hex chart from Sandy Alnock and I had swatched them all out, I was kind of mad at myself because I had at least two or three colors that were almost identical. Um, 
so anyway now all of the flower coloring is done and I'm just going in with this um, mustard color this Y I think it's 26 28 Y26 28 one of those and coloring in the centers and then the centers just looked really dark to me so I wanted to go in with my um, white gel pen and again it's a little difficult to see in the video but what I'm doing is just adding little dots to the stamen and the flowers to help them kind of stand out and then I'm going to go in with some clear wink of Stella and just add that to the water for some shimmer like I said this thing was crazy busy so I didn't want to add too much to it but I cannot make a card without shimmer so I went ahead and cut it down so it would be a regular size card base I'm going to go in any areas where my water coloring um, didn't get all the way to the edges and fill in I think I used E33 and then B01 for the water and I know that there are some of you that are totally cringing that I cut off all of the flowers <laughs> that I colored but uh, it's easier for me to color a whole flower than it is for me to color a half a flower my shading is better so I would rather color all of it and then cut it off than have to color half of it and feel like it wasn't as good as it could be so then I outlined everything um, with a EK Success journaling pen like I normally do I outlined the um, trees and the flowers and now I'm going to go ahead and stamp the sentiment this is a misty and basically it's um, it's a stamping tool and what it allows you to do is stamp continuously in the same spot and I did end up stamping my sentiment twice because I'm working on watercolor paper I don't even think I said that it's Hansen um, Montebal 140 pound watercolor paper and so I stamped it uh, twice and because it is rough I, I did need to stamp it twice normally um, this ink which is uh, W plus nine's pure uh, color black I never need to stamp twice it's a beautiful ink to stamp sentiments with so I have a white card base that I prepared uh, folded it over with my Teflon bold folder and then I'm adding some basil cardstock in robin's egg and um, then I'm just going to go ahead and adhere my um, one layer panel right on top and that's it that's the whole card so I was really happy with the way that it turned out. I hope that you guys are too. And um, I hope that you'll hop over to the blog and meet Nikki because she really is uh, totally amazing. So thank you so much for joining me and I will catch you guys on the next one. Bye.